Welcome to the Altium Designer 17 Advanced PCB Course Module on VIA Stitching and Shielding. Altium Designer has the ability to provide stitching between polygon pores or power planes to reduce the power distribution network's impedance, reduce radiated noise, and to isolate traces. Let's look at adding stitching to the grounds between the various layers on a PC board. Opening up the stitching PCB, we see it's a two-layer board with ground polygon pores top and bottom. Let's add stitching between the polygon pores by accessing the stitching tool from the Tools drop-down menu, selecting Via Stitching Shielding, and then Adding Stitching to Annette. This opens up the Add Stitching to Net window where we can configure the setup. First select the net to add the stitching to, in this case, ground. Next we will select the size for the added vias. I would recommend using one that's already present on the PC board to avoid needing an extra drill size. Given this is a two-layer board, we would select the drill pair under the Properties section for the top to bottom layers. If this PCB had multiple layers, we could in fact select a subset of them providing that we follow the typical PCB manufacturing standard stack-up rules. While we're here, notice that we could modify the VIA style from simple, using the same hole in VIA diameters on all the layers, to top, middle, bottom style to allow for more flexibility in the inner versus the outer pad sizes, all the way up to having full stack. This provides complete control over each of the layer's pad size if needed. We will stick to the simple style for illustration given this is a two-layer PC board. As you can see in the same net clearances section, there are no specific clearance rules associated with this net. We could in fact at this point create one if needed. Clicking on the Create New Clearance rule opens up the PCB Rules and Constraints editor preloaded for this net and configured for this stitching based rule. This would be most useful if we needed special clearances for RF or impedance considerations. Given that we don't, we can cancel out of this. Next we should configure the grid and if the VIA rows will be staggered. These settings have a profound impact on the number of VIAs auto-generated and experimentation is encouraged. While I like Swiss cheese on my sandwiches, it may not be optimal for my PCB, so I will carefully choose the number and settings. The grid needs to be at least as large as the largest pad size for the VIAs. Keeping the stagger alternate row checked, let's click OK and see the results of the full automatic placement of stitching VIAs. The tool will add them wherever there is both a top and bottom ground connection possible without incurring any DRC violations. As you can see, the vias were added and we have an information window pop-up providing the actual number of added vias. Let's remove the stitching just added by clicking on a stitching via and selecting the via stitching. Now we can hit delete and remove the entire stitching array. In some cases, we may want to constrain the vias to a particular area of the PCB. Restarting the stitching, we will focus on the upper left stitching parameter section. There is a constrain area checkbox. Notice that this window has retained the last setup information. Clicking on the constrain area box, the window closes to allow us to place the vertices of the box we want to define for the stitching. This can be a simple box or a more complex area defined. Right click to complete the enclosed area. At this point, the stitching configuration window reappears. Clicking OK will add the vias to the area defined. What if the basic shape of the box that you had defined for placement of vias was good, but you need to tweak the via pattern location to better align it on the PCB? Double clicking on a stitching via and selecting the via stitching group, we reopen its configuration window. Now we would want to add a desired offset in the stitching parameters and tune the placement as needed. Clicking OK, recreates the via stitching with the offsets. What if you are overall very happy with the stitching but need to remove a single stitching via or maybe a couple of them? If you click on the offending via when the selection window opens up, pick the via instead of stitching via and you can delete it as an individual via and leave the rest of the stitching in place. Adding a polygon pore cutout shows us the effect of a missing section of polygon pore on the stitching. Let's add a polygon cutout using place, polygon pour cutout, and now repeat adding the net stitching and we see the effect. While I use net stitching for most of my designs, a lifesaver tool feature is the net shielding. 
especially when I was working on a number of RF designs. This feature sped up the entire process, allowing me to automatically provide shielding to the RF nets. Looking at the partial RF schematic, we see the RF chain starting at RF1 and passing through a number of components and then on to the BNC connector P1. You'll notice that we have a net class added called RF to all of the nets in that chain to facilitate the addition of shielding for those nets on the PC board. Switching to the PCB view, we see the RF chain placed and routed. Let's add shielding to a section of trace. Start by clicking on a trace to add the shielding to, and then using the tool's drop-down menu, via stitching shielding option now, we would pick Add Shielding to Net. We have the familiar configuration tool with a little twist. The Net to Shield Selected Objects box is automatically checked given we had a trace selected when starting the tool. We can hit OK and see the results. This works well, but given we want to shield the entire RF chain, let's take advantage of the RF Net class. Opening up the PCB panel and setting the mode to Nets, click on the RF Chain class to select all of those traces. Now when we start the VS Stitching, it will add stitching to the entire RF chain. As with the stitching vias, clicking on a single via and selecting it instead of the via stitching selection allows us to trim off individual shielding vias if needed. What if the trace layer does not have the requisite polygon pore? Copper shielding can be added along with the vias at the same time. Let's remove the top polygon and the shielding and we can illustrate this feature. Here we reselect the RF net class and then rerun the via shielding, this time checking the Add Shielding copper box. Now we have the shielding vias added with copper. We can use the polygon pore cutout to remove some of this copper shielding if desired. Again, do a place polygon pore cutout over a section of the copper shield to be removed, and you can see it is now gone. This completes the module on via stitching and shielding, where we covered adding, configuring, and modifying both stitching and shielding vias. Please do the via stitching exercise.